To understand why a monopolist charges more for their product, we need to evaluate their cost curves. Here is the normal situation where price is on the vertical axis and quantity is on the horizontal axis. Marginal costs are the costs of producing each additional unit, and marginal revenue is the money earned by selling one additional unit. We know that in order to maximize profits, a firm, any firm, whether a monopolist or not, is going to want to choose where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. In a competitive market, marginal revenue is flat like this because no matter how much we produce, we can sell our product at the market price. If a farmer grows corn, it doesn't really matter how big their farm is. There's still a small fraction of the total market, and so their supply won't significantly impact the market price. Sometimes we say that demand facing the firm is perfectly elastic, meaning that the producer can't really impact the price at all. They're price takers. No one is willing to pay more than the market price for this farm's corn. But that isn't the case for the monopolist. Since they're the sole producer of the good, the quantity they choose will be the whole market supply. And so they do not face a perfectly elastic demand curve. They face the actual demand curve. Nevertheless, this point where demand crosses marginal cost would still be the optimal outcome. Here, everyone who's willing to pay more than the cost of producing the unit they will consume would be able to get one. But this is no longer where marginal cost crosses marginal revenue. If this is our demand curve, marginal revenue looks like this. Let's illuminate that with a numerical example. Let's say demand is given by this equation. QD equals 100 minus P. Let's chart that out. At a price of $100, this monopolist will sell zero units because if we plug $100 in for P, we get that QD, the quantity demanded, is zero. But at a price of $99, they would sell one unit. If they charge $98, they would sell two units. If they charge $97, they would sell three units. If they want to attract enough customers to sell four units, they need to drop the price to $96. And on and on we go. With this, we can calculate revenue and marginal revenue. Revenue is just price times quantity. 100 times zero is zero. 99 times one is 99. 98 times two is 196, and so on. Marginal revenue is the additional revenue we get from selling one more unit. When we produce and sell one unit, we increase our revenue by $99. That is the marginal revenue. If we produce two units, our revenue rises from $99 to $196, which is a difference of $97. The marginal revenue of the second unit is only $97, because while we gain $98 selling the second unit, we lose $1 because we drop the price of the first unit as well. Because we have to lower the price for all units when we increase production, marginal revenue falls faster than the price. If we put this on a graph, we get this. Demand is in dark blue, and the marginal revenue is the light blue line. When a monopolist produce more, they have to lower what they charge in order to sell it. And they have to lower that price for all the units they sell. If they tried to hold out and charge $99 for the first unit and $98 for the second unit, customers would catch on. They would just wait for the monopolist to produce the 99th unit, and all try to be the 99th customer paying $1 for it. And just to be clear, this doesn't happen in a competitive market because firms cannot impact the price they earn from each unit. Only monopolists are able to reduce production in order to raise the price up to what consumers are willing to pay. The profit maximizing rule is true no matter what kind of firm you are. 
it just doesn't make fiscal sense for a monopolist to produce at this point here, where they exhaust all possible mutually beneficial trades. Again, where the dot is now would be the best outcome because it satisfies as much demand as possible while still respecting the opportunity costs of the resources used. But profits would be higher if the monopolist reduced production, letting their marginal costs fall until they're equal to marginal revenue. The reason they want to cut back on production is because it allows them to raise the price. In a competitive market, it would have no effect on the price. If one firm reduced production, there would be dozens of others ready to increase production to fill in the gap. But for the monopolist, reducing production means making your product more scarce, and the price will be bid up by consumers willing to pay the most. The monopolist will be able to charge whatever the marginal consumer is willing to pay at this quantity, which is found by just following this point up to the demand curve and over to the price. The problem with this outcome, aside from it just feeling like a nasty thing to do, is that there's dead weight loss. In this gray triangle are consumers willing to pay more than what it costs for a monopolist to produce something. But the monopolist is unwilling to sell it to them because it would mean they would have to lower the price for everyone else. Consider the Apple iPhone. Apple is the only company that makes the iPhone, and so in a sense they have a monopoly over it. It isn't a true monopoly because there are many substitutes for iPhones, and Apple faces many competitors like Samsung and Google and LG. But we can see deadweight loss in the market for iPhones. The iPhone 14 Pro retailed between $799 and $999, but it only cost about $500 to make. Now, in microeconomics, we know better than to take these numbers at face value. The $500 likely only represents the explicit costs of making the iPhone, and not the implicit costs, which would raise that number. Nevertheless, there are surely lots and lots of consumers who'd be willing to pay, say, $699 for an iPhone 14 Pro, and Apple would be happy to sell them one at that price, because it still leaves them with a hefty profit, but they refuse. Those consumers are denied iPhones because if Apple offers it to them for $699, then they have a huge incentive to buy a bunch, which they can resell to others at a discount from Apple's normal price. The law of one price unfortunately applies here. And for that reason, lots of mutually beneficial trades will go unsatisfied. To recap, the efficient price would be found where marginal cost crosses with demand. In a competitive market, this is the point reached and the point where all mutually beneficial trades are exhausted. On our graph, that price is labeled PE. The monopolist will find it advantageous to restrict production, however, because they will trade fewer sales for higher prices and lower costs. And it will just always be the case that some amount of restriction will increase profits. The monopolist's price is labeled PM on our graph. The difference between them is the monopolist markup, an increase in the price brought about by a lack of competition.